Hello guys, so in this video I actually want to uh, quickly compare uh, a few different kinds of knives, kitchen knives. Um, so right in front of me I have the Shun Classic. Um, I think this is a 7 inch Chinese cleaver, uh, vegetable cleaver by the way. And this is a IKEA brand 365 uh, stainless steel Santoko vegetable knife. Back on here is my newest acquisition which is the Shun uh, Hikari 6 inch chef's knife. And uh, so the reason I want to do this comparison is I want to see whether the most expensive knife over here, which is the Shun um, Hikari, which uses the SG2 steel, stainless steel, sandwiched in between uh, a softer or more rust resistant stainless steel uh, in this package. And also features a very beautiful looking uh, birch wood handle. Um, so I want to cut a few different things and just quickly tell you guys whether I think this knife is well worth the price or not. Uh, so in front of me I have just one tomato and right over here on the side I have some short ribs I just bought for July 4th and also a uh, pork shelter picnic that I'm gonna try to uh, grill on my barbecue. So I'm gonna actually remove the bone um, on the pork shoulder, uh, use uh, those knives and tell you guys which knife works best for deboning uh, the pork shoulder and also the, uh, the ribs. So all those knives I actually just recently sharpened, uh, use a wet stone, uh, uh, like wet sharpening stone. So they should be fairly sharp. They're not like razor sharp, but they should be fairly sharp. And this one, since it's my newest acquisition, um, this should be the sharpest by theory. So I'm gonna start cutting. Okay, let's see. Uh, I know a lot of people on the YouTube actually likes to do um, a test where they just, uh, it cuts like butter, where they just put the thing on top and then try to slide. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. No, obviously. This tomato is too small to be sliding around, but as you can see, it still goes through just, just fine. So, go try another one. Really, it needs a steady cutting board, which I don't have, but if I just like try to do this rocking motion, hopefully it will catch and I would slide. But really, like there's no effort. You just move it around the tomato and it slides like perfectly fine. So, I'm gonna try my other two knives and tell you whether they are smooth gliding or not. So, also, the Santoko, by the way, this is a $20 knife, and uh, it actually slices perfectly fine, it actually slices better than the, uh, at least on the first cut. And by the way, this tomato has very thick skin. <laughs> um, this one glides, actually just as smooth as the um, the Hikari, like almost the same. So, and let me try the vegetable cleaver. This is also from Shun, this is their classic series. Um, oh, well, because of the weight of the cleaver, it, it, cut, it cuts into the vegetable much, much easier. Um, and and you can actually just slice really really thin if you choose to like that um, of course the other knives you can also slice really thin so like so and let's try the hikari hmm not bad. Okay. So if you take a look, all three knives do the exact same thing. If you ask me, actually, I think it's just as easy sliding through vegetables using any of those knives sharpened whether it's the uh, the vegetable cleaver, which actually, if you look at the profile, 
it's a, it's a much thicker knife, vegetable knife. And if you look at the profile of those two, uh, those are much thinner. The thinnest is the Shun Hikari uh, six inch chef's knife. Um, and by the way, those really nice looking design, they, they, they really doesn't do anything to help, um, to help make sure that the vegetable doesn't stick onto the tomatoes. The, actually all the vegetables sticks onto all those pieces. So they don't really help at all, whatever they tell you. Um, so there's that. And uh, so the conclusion for cutting vegetables, all the knives should do equally well cutting vegetables. Now let's actually move on to the actual meat. So just gonna do a few more cuts. Let's see. So the Santoko have a very flat profile. So it's much more adapted to chopping action where you don't have to rock a lot. And if you look at this uh, chef's knife, I actually have a slight rocking action because the uh, the belly is slightly curved, so it's more adapted for people who actually like to use the knife to do this kind of action, or if you like to rock your knife like so. Uh, oh, this this tomato have really thick skin, by the way. It's not the knife. I think this tomato is just a bad example. Uh, the the skin is really really thick. So I think if I cut from this end, it should be much easier which, yes, it's much easier. All right, so um, next section, uh, we did our really quick vegetable test. I can tell you, really, there's no difference between all those knives once you have them sharpened. Maybe the difference you would be able to feel after you uh, actually use the knife for a little bit because uh, in terms of the hardness of the steel, this one should be the softest. And this is the VG10 steel, which is supposed to be fairly hard. Uh, I think 60 to 61 uh, harness on the uh, harness scale. And this is actually a SG2 uh, steel, which is powdered steel, which gets to 63 um, on the harness scale. So actually during my use, because I've owned those knives for a while, the Shun uh, Classic VG10 is most definitely lasts longer uh, before I need to actually go back and, and horn it or sharpen it uh, compared to the IKEA stainless steel knife. Uh, don't get me wrong, when you sharpen them, all the knife performs exactly the same, but in terms of longevity, if you keep the Hikari sharpened, and it's gonna last you probably twice or even three times as long as the IKEA knife over here. Um, okay, so let's move on to actually try to debone some short ribs, um, and then see which one is easier for this kind of work. So. Uh, for the first piece, I'm gonna use the IKEA knife over here, which is a Santoko knife, which is mostly for vegetables. Um, should work. I'm trying to get the bone out and then keep most of the meat on the ribs, okay? So I usually start from the edge of the bone right over here and then just work, work my way over. Try to feel where the bone is and then just gently and slowly glide through. Here, I'll show you guys. So it takes it takes some work because the um, the point is not is not pointy. So it's hard for me to actually move the knife around inside the meat. So I mean, it cuts pretty smooth. So that's fairly nice. Uh, let's try, actually, let's try the cleaver next, the vegetable cleaver. Don't ever use this to chop the bones because you're gonna damage the cleaver because you actually need a butcher or like a meat cleaver um, to do that job. So Butcher. Butcher's knife, yeah. And uh, so let's start this one. So I'm gonna be doing the same thing. I'm just gonna start from this, this side and then just walk my way over. Move on, I need a side. So because this knife have uh, more weight to it, it's it feels like it's easier to glide through the meat right over here. So again, I'm just trying to feel where the, uh, the connection to the bone is and then just gliding 
lightly gliding through. So there's one. Obviously, it feels like it, it did the job actually slightly quicker than the uh, the Santoko knife. Um, so I would say it did this job just fine. So I'm gonna leave those bones underneath the side. Uh, next, I'm just gonna quickly try the chef's knife. And keep in mind, this is by no means a scientific test. I just want to tell you guys what I feel about those different kinds of knives um, that I have in my own kitchen. So again, exact same thing. I'm gonna work from this side. And uh, right off the bat, feels like this is more smooth. So follow the bone. This one have actually a weird bone shape. Uh, that's why it's not cutting through all the way. And be careful of your hands. So, the bone shape is different. That's why I have to uh, I have a hard time going through. So let's let's cut another one and see how it goes. So I'll leave this aside. Let's try to find a smaller piece, maybe with a flatter bone. Or maybe this one. Okay, so this one is more similar to the first two that I cut in terms of the shape of the bone. Find the bone and then glide through. Somehow, I think the easiest to use in, in this situation is actually the, uh, the cleaver. Um, because of the weight, because of the size, um, it, it goes through the, uh, the ribs like much, much faster. Like I can just like get a, get a general feel and then just start grinding it over or cutting it through. And then like not much effort at all. And then it just already almost going through going to cut through the whole thing. So this definitely feels much easier. In terms of the speed, also I think this one is the quickest. And actually the, the Hikari is slowest, I think because of the size, it's a six inch, it's actually um, a little bit too small for this job. The Santoko is uh, slightly like 0.5 inch longer. And uh, I feel like this one is the slowest, this one is second slowest, and the, the classic shrimp cleaver, vegetable cleaver, is the fastest. Um, I think in this instance, if, you're, if something that you're cutting is much longer than, than your knife, or actually almost as long as your knife, it's better to find a knife that's longer than the thing that you're going to cut. Uh, that way you're going to cut through uh, without much problems or much trouble, and it's going to be much faster. So um, I'm just gonna walk through all the ribs, again, using different knives. And this is definitely the fastest. Okay, leave the side, try the Santoko again. This one have a big bone. Big bone, small meat, not much meat. And this one have a smaller bone and a lot of meat. So the Santoko also does the job just fine. Again, switching back to the Hikari. Weird shape, never mind. So this one had an interesting all around. Uh, the the fat was wrapping on top of the uh, the bone, and the hikari actually did the job just fine. And you know why? Because this meat is actually 
smaller than the length of the knife, much smaller. So it's able to actually do the work perfectly fine and much quicker than before. If say I'm doing on this meat, which is pretty long, it will be slightly harder uh, because of the length of the meat. So because you always want to be able to have your point outside of the thing that you're gonna be cutting. If it's inside, then it might get stuck. So, um, yep, this one is definitely slowest in terms of working on the meat over here. I'll try the Sentoku again. And it did the job just fine, very quickly. Very last one, again, going back to Shun Classic. And this bone is weird. It's got a weird shape, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to glide it through. Just gonna go with the edge of the edge of the bone. Okay, right here. So that's the bone itself. Alright guys, so um after cutting all those meats, I just want to add some comments. So obviously, as you can see, the best knife for this job is actually the Shun Vegetable Cleaver. Uh, even though it's called Vegetable Cleaver, my wife, actually, this is her all-time favorite. She uses this to cut everything, uh, meat, vegetables, whatever, just not bones. The reason I can't use this knife is because the Shin Classic actually features a right hand design. So this is actually a D-shaped handle. I'm a lefty. So every time I grab this knife, even though I, I kind of like it on my right hand, but every time I grab this knife, the point actually lands right on top of my thumb. It's super, super uncomfortable. So I can't really use it for a long time to cut anything seriously. Even for this, like it gets uncomfortable. The reason I got the Hikari is because they have a ambidextrous design so the handle is perfectly round or perfectly oval there's no point over here for left hand users to be uncomfortable with so same thing with the other side and this knife is actually much much better choice for a left hand user unfortunately it's not really suited for this job the reason being it's not low enough so if you get a hikari if you get a slightly longer knife, say they're 8 inch or 9 inch option, you should be able to complete this job just as well. And uh, keep in mind, um, this knife being the second place in this comparison is the Santoko vegetable knife. Again, as you can see, vegetable knife doesn't mean it can only cut vegetables. It can do a lot of other things. So don't be limited by the name of those knives. You like Basically, you can use all of those knives do all kinds of things that you need to do. The important thing is you need to find a knife that's comfortable, have a fairly good steel that's fairly good long lasting and doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. All right, so at the very end, since we're cooking the short ribs, I'm gonna dice some onions and then test out which knife will be best suited for this kind of situation. Uh, again, I'm gonna start with the Shun Hikari, six inch. If I remember correctly, some people on the internet was kind of doing this kind of a thing. So basically they're just gliding through the onions and then doing the cuts. And then I think they give this, this, uh, this central part a slight slice. And then they keep the onion's shape and then they just start dicing. So I find this quite interesting, intriguing also. So, and of course at the end it's gonna be really hard to, uh, to dice this part. So I'm just gonna... My eye starts to hurt now. Uh, but that's how you dice the onions really quick um, Again, um, it works just fine Still a little bit hard to push in to the onion with this knife. So 
I don't know what's going on. I might have to sharpen this knife um, after this video. Let's try it on another. Let's actually try a try a bigger piece. That one is a little small. Okay, so let's get started again. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just uh, make some small cuts. Hard to do on camera. And this onion, because it's fairly flat, or it's it's not as as full as some other onions people are cutting on the on the video. It's it's harder to make those uh, those cuts, vertical cuts. All right. So now I'm gonna start dicing. This job also perfectly fine. Ooh. Okay. Get those out of the way. Yep. And uh, last try, I'm gonna use the Shun Classic uh, vegetable cleaver, and let's see if it's gonna do the job. And because the knife is much much thicker I can feel the onion is moving under my finger okay give it another horizontal cut nope it's not even it's not even gonna go through careful of the fingers never mind that's probably the best it can go and I'm gonna start cutting So this one, because the knife is much thicker, I wasn't able to go as far as far into the onion as I want to. And actually, because of the thickness of the the shun, it's harder to to dig into vegetables that are actually fairly dense. With the other two knives, uh, it's much easier to dig into things because they're fairly thinner. So with my all-time favorite knife, I'm just going to cut the onion uh, with my uh, usual way. Nothing fancy. Similar sizes. Yep, so that's another way you can cut onions. Uh, hope you guys uh, saw how she did it. If not, uh, just uh, just uh, actually rewind <laughs> and uh, take a look. I think it's much faster than the Western way. I think the Western way looks a lot cooler to me, but her way is much more practical. Uh -huh. And it doesn't actually require any of those smaller knives. Or any techniques. Right. So I think the conclusion that I'm going to make is choose the knife that best fits your needs like all the knife can be working just as great um, if you're using it to cut the right thing okay and all the knife can be as sharp as you want um, again the the very end the conclusion is choose a knife that have that maybe can last longer but is with a shape that you think you're going to use the most in the kitchen okay so this is sg2 it's going to be longest lasting that's a VG10, that's gonna be second longest lasting. But we have it for five years. Yeah, we had it for five years and we just uh, actually sharpen it once in a while and it keeps the sharpness fairly good. Uh, and this one, the Ikea one, it's very sharp after, after sharpening, but it gets to really, really quick. So that was my knife before, and now I'm gonna be uh, using this knife as my main knife. This is um, gonna remain my knife. <laughs> yes, that's gonna remain her favorite knife because of the right hand only design so again if you're left hand really make sure you get a knife that's comfortable in your hand with the, with the left hand design uh, anything that's round works great um, those d-shaped handle 
They're only designed for right hand use. So don't ever get the Shrink Classic if you're a left hand user. Uh, that was my mistake at the very beginning. Again, I hope you guys uh, found this video helpful. Uh, if you do, please do hit the like button. And uh, if you have any questions about any of the knives I've talked about, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. Uh, otherwise, uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Take care.